They have appeared on state TV, and I've seen the video. Um, both men look okay. Aidan Aslan has a, a cut uh, down the middle of his forehead. Um, they look pretty tired. They look pretty exhausted. They say they're okay. They say they're being fed and watered. But it would appear as though, certainly in terms of Aidan, he's being encouraged to say certain things to camera because there is an unidentified man who's asking him questions really about... Um, what appears to be the Azov Battalion, the Nationalist Battalion in Mariupol, um, and he is being asked pretty leading questions. Um, for example, uh, uh, you know, he's asked in Russian why those people killed civilians, and Aiden replies, because they're criminals. Um, he's asked again, weren't you surprised by this attitude towards civilians? Um, and he talks about the fact that uh, they were looting supermarkets where people um, who didn't have food should have been getting food. So certainly leading questions, I think, which were meant to be shown on Russian state TV to blacken the name of those Ukrainian fighters um, who Russia characterizes as all nationalists um, and how they were not looking after the remaining civilians in Mariupol. I think that is the strategy. Now, what um, uh, uh, these two men were asking for is to be exchanged for Viktor Medvedchuk, who is this pro-Russian uh, Ukrainian politician who, two days after this special military operation, as Russia insists on calling it, began, was um, uh, escaped from his house arrest and was only recently last week recaptured by Ukrainian authorities. Viktor Medvedchuk is a very interesting individual. I interviewed him actually back in 2019 around um, the elections then when Volodymyr Zelensky came to power. Uh, he's believed to be the godfather of Vladimir Putin's daughter. Um, he led a pro-Russian faction within the parliament, an extremely wealthy man. He ran pro-Russian television channels and had pretty much a, a media empire. And then he was accused last year by Zelensky um, of treason and put under house arrest. And that was thought to be perhaps one of the reasons why um, Vladimir Putin felt uh, that, that, that really alongside Zelensky uh, asking, pushing to join NATO, um, that he was making anti-Russian moves that Russia could no, tol no longer tolerate. That is at least one of many, many um, theories that have been put forward as to why uh, uh, Vladimir Putin decided to choose now to go into Ukraine. Um, Simultaneously with this video being released on uh, state TV of the two Britons, we've had a video released by Victor Mitchell, by the Ukrainian uh, Special Forces, SBU, um, of Viktor Medvedchuk asking uh, the Russian president to be released in exchange for Ukrainian forces still in Mariupol and any citizens um, who are still unable to access humanitarian corridors and leave the city. So there do seem to be a lot of requests being made to Boris Johnson, to Vladimir Putin, um, to exchange various people around Viktor Medvedchuk uh, and these two Brits. And we do believe there is another Briton also who's been fighting um, with the Ukrainian forces in Mariupol who may have been captured. We don't know where these men are, whether they're in Russia itself or still in, uh, 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 in and around Mariupol. Um, we have yet to hear, of course, from the Prime Minister, but we have heard from uh, the Kremlin, who said last week that um, Viktor Medvedchuk was a Ukrainian citizen, he is not a Russian national, he doesn't have anything to do with the special military operation, and therefore they can't uh, consider a prisoner swap in exchange for Ukrainian forces. But it does depend, really, on Vladimir Putin, given the kind of close allegiance that he does have with the Russian president. So we'll have to see how this goes. But certainly the fact that these two men have been broadcast on state TV is a way, I think, of trying to communicate that the bad guys in this are the nationalist battalions in Mariupol who have been essentially holding civilians there hostage. That is the fundamental narrative on state TV about why Mariupol is the uh, charred remains of a city that it is, because they say nationalist battalions, neo-Nazis, as they like to call them all over state TV, are holding civilians essentially as human shields, which means that the Russians uh, need to target these civilian infrastructure to get rid of the militants. Um, so we'll have to see what happens uh, with, with the fate of these two men. But they did say that they were OK and they did look um, 
pretty much okay. No visible signs of, of, of abuse.